Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to church and happy new year. 2023 is here. And how many of you guys agree that, man, what better way to kick off the new year than to be in church and to worship God together? Amen. You know, uh, there's a scripture, Psalm 65, 11. It says, God, you crown the year with goodness. And that's my prayer for you and for us as a church, that his goodness will be on us this year. Amen. So let's worship him together. If you know this song, sing it out with us. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. This bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not. Forever free, I'm not the same. I take the master, I take the savior, I thank God. Yeah. Can I tonight? I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So long to my old friend, burden and bitterness, you can't just keep it moving, nah, you ain't welcome here, so now till I walk the streets of gold, I sing of how you saved my soul, this way with the sun has found its way back home. Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Come on, let's give him praise this morning. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Come on, is that you this morning? Hell lost another one.
believe the war is over. Right here, your will be done. Come awaken us. Come awaken us.
Aren't you glad he's our rock of ages? That means through the ages, through the generations, he has never changed and he never will change. Amen. Thank God for who he is. Happy New Year. Great to worship with you on the first Sunday of the year. Why don't we give God just a big hand for who he is? Amen. Amen. So great to see you this morning. I know we're all believing God for a great 2023. Amen. But we know that it'll have some obstacles and challenges along the way, but we also know that our God will bring us through. Sometimes the best way to move forward in faith is to look back to God's faithfulness, to remember what He has done. You know, the, in, we can read in Jer Joshua 3 how God divided the, Red, the Jordan River for His people so that they walked through on dry land. It was a miracle. He was leading them to the promised land. Joshua said, while the waters are divided, He sent 12 12 men back in of the heads of the tribe. He said, go pick up a stone and build an altar of remembrance. He said, build a memorial so that when your children say, what do these stones mean? You can tell them, remind them of the goodness of God. You can remind them how faithful he was to you. Amen. <laughs> to some people, I'm sure those rocks look like a pile of rubble. But to them, it was a reminder of the faithfulness of God. And I just want to encourage you, church. I tell you, we can expect God to do some good things. Has he brought you through before? Think about the times that he's protected you, directed you. He's given you wisdom. He's strengthened you. He's comforted you. He has protected and, and, and done things for you that were way beyond what you could ever do for yourself. And how do you know if he did it once, he'll do it again, right? He will do it again. Let's thank you for what he's going to do. Amen. Such an awesome Savior. He's our rock of ages. Turn to somebody and say, he's my rock of ages. We're going to pray this morning like we usually do. But before we pray, I want to give you a good report. It's always good to hear how God answers prayer, right? So let me give you this praise report. One of our ladies has had a desire to go to college and didn't have the finances. One of our leaders encouraged her to apply for assistance, and she received the funding she needed to enroll. She also needed a laptop to do some courses online, and she asked her small group to pray with her. After two weeks, somebody blessed her with a brand new laptop. She's so proud at 55 to be a college student and so thankful for the prayers and the encouragement of her small group. Amen. I tell you. It's great to have people who believe God with you. Amen. We're going to pray over some requests this morning. We're going to pray over, first of all, a son asking for prayer for his mother as she recovers from surgery, a man needing healing in his body, a family needing strength and peace as they navigate through an upcoming court case. So, you know, Jesus said, where two or three gather in his name, he's right in the midst of us. So will you gather with me in prayer? Will you join your faith with me? How many of you know when we pray, God moves? Amen. So join with me as we pray. Father, we thank you for being so willing to hear us and to help us in life. The scripture says it's your good pleasure, God, to give us the kingdom. Father, we pray for the mom who's recovering from surgery. We know this son is concerned. He loves her and he needs her. So, Lord, we ask that you be with her in this healing process. Give her the rest, the care she needs to fully recover and to be at her best. Father, we pray for the man needing healing in his body. We know you're a healer. You made his body. You know the issue, and you know how to bring complete healing. We ask you to help him cooperate with you. And, Father, if he lacks wisdom, you said you would give it to us. So we agree for wisdom, healing, and health for our friend in Jesus' name. Father, whatever's wrong in his body, we believe you can make it right. Lord, for the family facing a court case, we ask you to help them navigate this situation step by step. Lord, you said the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And so we thank you for helping them lean on you daily for wisdom, strength, and direction. We pray that you'd give them favor and move in their behalf. And Lord, for those in our church family who have needs today, we ask you to minister to everyone and meet them according to your will. We pray it all in the name of Jesus, our Savior. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for agreeing with me. We're going to celebrate with about 11 people who are being water baptized today. So let's celebrate with them. 
Amen, amen. Well, hey, Faith family, welcome to church. Happy New Year's to you. I'm standing here with my friend Rolando, man, and let me tell you, he's got a story to tell God's grace and mercy in his life, amen? And so we're excited, man. We've got a bunch of people up here being baptized, not just what God's going to do in their life, but in their entire family as they make this commitment to him. You know, the cool thing is, is we can't do anything about the past, but 2023 and beyond, God's got greater things to come, amen? And Rolando lives and all of ours, amen? So we're going to celebrate with our church family today. Rolando, you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, my friend? Yes, sir. All right, man, upon your profession of faith, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
church family, give God a shout of praise this morning. Aren't you excited to be coming alive in Jesus? He's springing up a well in us in the year of 2023. Amen. Are you excited about that this morning? Well, it is so great to be here in the house of God with each and every single one of you this morning. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a great time bringing in the new year. We have a wonderful service ahead. Before we continue on, why don't you greet somebody, tell them how great it is to see them, and we can go ahead and dismiss our J High students to their class. Well, like I said, it's so great to be here with you guys. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else on the first day of 2023 than with all of you. How about you guys? <laughs> Well, it's so great to be here with you guys. We want to take a second and welcome those of you who may be here worshiping with us for your very first time. Whether you're here in person or if you're tuning in online for the first time, we just want to say a big, warm welcome to you. We're so excited that you're here, and we just consider it an honor that you've taken time out of your week to come and be with us. So we never take it lightly that you're here with us this morning, and we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful time with us. You know, Sunday church is such a special thing because we get to come together and worship together. We get to hear a great message that strengthens our hearts. And we get to be in the presence of friends and family, and that just makes life so much better. I know so many of us here this morning know what a difference God can make in our lives when we stay faithful in coming to church and through the friendships and relationships that we build here in church. Our mission here at FFC is to celebrate God and champion people. So that's what we want to do. We want to help champion you through life and help you experience everything that God has for your life because it's far greater than we can ever think or imagine. So that's why we've created an orange card just for you. You'll find it right there in the seat backs in front of you. And we would just love for you to take a few seconds to fill it out today. It helps us get to know you and learn how we can serve you in the best way possible. Or you can follow the link here on the screen. It takes you to the same thing. So we'd love for you to do that and you can drop it in the offering boxes as you leave here today. And if you are here for your first time, we want to remind you that we have a welcome hub and it is located in our connection center right through these doors. We'd love for you to pop on by there meet some friendly faces. They'll be there to answer any questions you have, pray with you, whatever you need. We're here for you. And they also have a cool gift for you. So remember to stop by there today. Church family, let's tell our guests how excited we are that they're here with us this morning. Hey, church family, join us January the 9th through the 27th for a prayer focus we're calling 21 Days to Heart Health. We'll gather Monday through Friday for a devotional and prayer led by our pastors and leadership team. The gathering will be online only from 7 to 7.30 a.m. and can be viewed through Facebook, YouTube, or myffc.com. God has a good plan for your year, and we want to help you see it and seize it this January. Have a New Year's resolution? Many people do. Maybe yours is hitting the gym, paying off debt, or having more fun time. How about encountering God's goodness every single day? Simply put, God created us to know Him, find life, enjoy community, and engage in fulfilling mission. He loves us and loves loving others through us. Let's learn more through His Word. Everybody, it is so good to start the new year with you. And uh, you know, as I was sitting there enjoying worship with you, I just had a just a, a warmth in my heart. It's good to pastor people who God's going to kind of get a lot of glory through their story in 2023. Amen. And uh, you are one of those. So it's so good to gather this first Sunday of the year and to worship with you. You know, I have a lot of friends who just do one service on on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and I understand that because 
You know, the crowd's usually just about two-thirds of what a normal crowd is. But we had about 60% of this crowd in the first service this morning. So how many of you are glad to be in a church where people are hungry for God and God's rewarding them because of how they're letting him work in their hearts? And uh, I like to service your regular routine. Of course, we service what's going on in society. But one of my greatest joys as pastor is to see what happens in the life of a person who learns to practice regular and heartfelt worship, wholehearted worship. So, such a joy. Before we get into God's Word today, I do want to ask you a question. How many of you still have leftovers in your house? Can I see your hand if you still have leftovers in your house? I'm not going to come. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to see if you have leftovers in your house. And <laughs> part of the reason is I'm happy for you if you do. You know, I, I told Tamara, I'm amazed. Every year we look at all this food. And we say, what are we going to do with all this? And then somehow, it's just all gone. You know, it's just all consumed. And it used to be because we had teenagers. How many of you know teenagers can cause food to disappear in a hurry, right? I remember the day when I used to call it the sacred portion. And when y'all would give me something I really liked, I would look at the kids and I'd say, now this is dad's sacred portion. He's hiding it in the refrigerator, and don't touch it. It's like the tree of life. There's a curse on anybody who touches the sacred portion. But uh, now, you know, I, I, I've noticed that as grandchildren grow up, food can leave pretty quick too, right? But uh, I reference that for this reason, and that is I really love the shift that occurs. People who know me know I'm a bit of a foodie. I like good food, and I love nothing I like more than having some good food and having great fellowship with people. Uh, but when the new year comes, I really enjoy the shift that happens where I begin to find my joy in prayer and fasting and in the things that God's thinking about uh, for this year in my life. So I want you to read the scripture with me as we start the year. It's in, in Psalm chapter, no, not Malachi, but let's go to Psalm chapter 16. Psalm 16. Here we go. Would you read it with me? You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You know, the, the, what happens in the heart of a true worshiper is that you start finding fullness of joy in the presence of God. And you find it two ways. One, just by how his presence uh, is working in your heart. You know, when I fast and pray, or even when I read my Bible through in the year, it's amazing how God can speak just the right thing, just the right way to let me know he knows what's going on in my life. The second thing, though, is the power he has to lift us to new places of blessing. So I want to encourage everybody, this week, let's start getting our heart ready for that. Can you say amen? Our encounter service Wednesday night is going to help us in that regard. Our new series on encountering the goodness of God is going to equip us to experience that in our life. And then our, our uh, 21 days to heart health is going to be really, really helpful uh, to everybody as well. But I just want to encourage you to get your heart ready for God to do some great things. A lot of you know I make time for Michael's birthday, which is November 12th till the week before Christmas Eve, and I always schedule some special prayer time during that time, because that's when, when God first started doing things in the church, when we kind of uh, consecrated things to him. And this year, here's the word the Lord's put in my heart, and that is God's going to help us step into the more that he has in store. How many of you are ready for the enemy to be really sad and God's people to be really glad because God is working for our good in the midst of all things. So let's get ready. And then I just want to remind you quickly that uh, that's why, you know, I, I want to remind you this week, let's find somebody who has never tasted of the goodness of God. And let's find somebody who maybe tasted of God's goodness at one time, but, you know, they kind of, they're one of the strange sheep the Scripture speaks of. That's really the reason we print these bring invitation cards that you can have the opportunity to grab on the way out. And you can use them two ways. Number one, they can just serve as a reminder for you to reach out to the people in your relational circle. Or I notice a lot of you put them on the <laughs> tables of restaurants, and that's awesome as long as you tip good. Can somebody say amen? So, but these are little cards, and let me tell you why I started printing them. Uh, numerous surveys have said that somewhere between 67 to 82 percent of people say they would attend church if a family member, a friend, 
or a co-worker invited them and would sit with them in church. And that's why Jesus said in Luke 14, we're God's gathering people. And when we come to church, if we gather people, our joy increases because of how we see God working in people's lives. So I just want to encourage all of us in that as we start to hear. Amen? Well, let's prepare our hearts to receive God's word. Let's say this together. I am immeasurably loved by God. His mercy towards me is unfailing. His grace meets all my needs. In him I find forgiveness, restoration, and abundant blessing. In me he finds gratefulness, partnership, and the highest praise. Amen. Almost all of us here are asking God for things as we start a new year. For some of you, you're asking God for wisdom so that you can get through a problem that you have and into the promise that God has for your life. Other people are asking God for strength. They're in the midst of a struggle right now, and they want to see God bring forth a new and a blessed season in their life. For some of you, you're asking for opportunities to come to you, and maybe you're asking for money to come to you. Maybe some of you are asking for a godly spouse to come to you, and all those things things are really, really good. In fact, the Bible says that we have not because we ask not. But this morning, I want to talk about a different side of answered prayer, and that is many times when we're waiting on God, we can get weary because it looks like things just aren't working out for us in life. And that's what the prophet Malachi addresses, and we're going to study his words today. And there's two things I want you to notice in Malachi 3.10. And first of all, I want you to notice the the, the punctuation marks, these whatever they're called for you English teachers, because what they do is, I know Tamara, you know what it is, but I don't, I forgot, I had a little brain freeze right there, but anyway, quotation marks, that's what they are, and what they do is they tell you that somebody's speaking, and the prophet Malachi wanted the people to know, these aren't just my words, but I want you to think deeply, because I really know that God has spoken this for me to say to you, the the second thing I want you to notice as we read it is this word floodgates. And I want you to notice that this word floodgates is plural, which means God has many ways and he has a number of things he wants us to think about whenever we think about how the scripture is playing out in our lives. Now here's the scripture. God encouraged them to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in his house. And then here's the phrase we're going to focus on. Test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. So God makes a promise, and that is, if we will test him right in our hearts, then he's going to throw open the floodgates of heaven, and he's going to begin to pour out so much blessing that we won't have room or capacity to handle it at the stage of life that we're at right now. And that's a, a thought that's addressed in Hebrews in a similar way. Listen to Hebrews 11.6. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I might be able to live a life that pleases me if I don't have faith in God, but God is pleased whenever I'm blessed in ways I could never bless myself. I'm protected from sin's curse in a way that I could never protect myself. And there's a witness that my life has because people can see that he could never be living the life that he lived lives without the favor and the blessing of God. And God says only people of faith can experience that. And then he puts the test that our heart goes through in two categories, and I want us to look at them closely. God says that without faith it's impossible to please him because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and also that God earnestly, he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So we all know the state of our own heart this morning. Morning, right? We know if we believe God exists or maybe we've been talked into thinking God doesn't exist. But when I look at creation and I look at everything that's been made that no other human being could reproduce, even the earth, let alone the entire cosmos that God created, the fact nobody else can do that tells me that there really is a God. And then the second thing God says is I have
have to believe not just that God exists, but I need to believe that my earnest seeking of God is going to reward me in a way that I would never experience it if it wasn't for the goodness of God in my life. You know, James, the Lord's brother, addressed what I'm talking about this morning in James 1 when he says as Christians, when we go through trials that we can't handle, God wants us to count it all joy. Now, that sounds like nonsense to a normal person who doesn't know God. You mean when everything is falling apart in my life, you want me to find a lot of joy in that. And we're going to see today that there's a reason for for it. And that is, whenever everything isn't working out in your life, that's whenever God wants you to stop and think about how many things are happening around you all the time that you can't control as a person. In, in fact, think of this, that the sun is 27 million degrees at its core. And scientists will tell you that if it was any closer to us, we would fry. If it was any further away from us, we would fry. Freeze, but God has put the sun in the perfect location to nurture life on our planet. And in the same way, God wants us to know there's lots of things that Jim can't control. So in trials, here's what I have the opportunity to do. I have the opportunity to say, God, you know how all this works, and I'm going to seek you, and I'm going to believe that you reward me because I know how to receive from you and earnestly seek you on the inside of my heart. Now, I have an illustration illustration that I think some of you are going to enjoy today because I want you to think this thought and that is that maybe the reason things aren't working out in my life is because I'm living in a culture where people haven't really learned to seek God and maybe I was raised in a family where I really wasn't taught to seek God and maybe the seeking God thing is what my heart really needs in the season that I'm in right now. I heard a story about this older man who had been widowed for a couple of years and he was getting lonely so he thought I just can't make it the rest of my life without being married so he joined a health club and when he got to the health club he thought man I, I need some training so he was so serious that he hired himself a trainer well the trainer showed him how to use every single machine that was in the health club and the man said to the trainer at the end he said no thank you for showing me all the machines but what I really want to know is what machines are going to put muscle on a man that attracts women to him and he said, oh, that's easy. It's the ATM machine that's down <laughs> in the lobby. And here's my point that sometimes in life, you know, we know what we want. We just don't know how to receive what we want, right? And that's what Malachi is talking about in this particular text. And he says that if we will learn to do two things, if we'll learn, first of all, how to recognize the floodgates of heaven and what God wants flooding into our life, and then if we'll learn to receive from those floodgates, Gates well, then Malachi says you're going to have a season where you can't even handle how much blessing God starts to pour into your life. So I'm not going to assume that I can identify all the floodgates, but I can tell you I really attempted to do it when I was studying for this service. And this morning I want to talk about three floodgates that if these floodgates are received well in your heart, God is going to reward your life at a new level this year. The first one is the floodgate of righteousness. And you say, Jim, why do you identify the floodgate of righteousness? Well, listen to how Malachi started his words in Malachi 3.6. God said, I, the Lord, don't change. And it's because of that, descendants of Jacob, that you don't have to be destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you've turned away from my decrees and you haven't kept them. And I want you to return to me, and I'm going to return to you, says the Lord Almighty. So things aren't working, and Malachi is a book where people talk about their weary in worship because things aren't working out. And God says, here's the first thing I want you to think about, that if you'll return to me, I am a God who knows how to make that part of your life begin to work out for you. And, and so for us, we're not raised in a world where people are talking to us and saying, listen, you know what? 
the real problem is? You're, you're too much in control of your life, and you need to be less in control of your life. No, we live in a society where people say, you need to dream the impossible dream, and you just need a little more perseverance, and you just need a little more, you know, uh, uh, drive and dedication, and that might be okay, and it's going to work in some parts of our life, but I can promise you it will not bring the blessings that right righteousness bring into a life and so we need to recognize that as Christians that's our society that people are telling us why do you go to church why do you you support your church why do you have regular attendance in a church well it's because have you noticed when you look around there are a lot of things in life that I can't control, and we live in a world that's out of control, and I found the answer to that, and you know what it is? It's the righteousness of God. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 6, didn't he? He talked about how pagan people who don't know God, they're working so hard to make their lives work out, but what did Jesus say? The answer to that is in Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33, he said, now listen, if you'll seek first his kingdom and God's righteousness, righteousness, then you're going to notice that all these other things start working out in your life. And as spiritual people, we really need to know how to, to not just have God bless us, but we need to know how to speak to our children. We need to know how to speak to our friends in the time that we're living in. Because let's face it, guys, we live in a time whenever, if you're a spiritual leader, you really only have a couple of choices. You can try to avoid everything that people get mad about, but if you avoid it, then they're going to believe the wrong things and their life isn't going to work out. Or we can choose to do what the Bible says that we need to do, and that is that we need to speak God's truth with a ton of love in our hearts, and we need to tie what we're saying into Scripture so people know this isn't just my opinion, this is a promise that God Almighty made that can change your life. You know, think about it. We live in a day where, man, people are just pleasure seekers and we don't want to be like the killjoy to people who are pleasure seekers but we do want them to know that if you start seeking pleasure among loving people you're going to have some serious problems in your life can you say amen or are there other ideologies I'm not against any you know buddy having a good time but I am against any ideology that's going to damage people's lives but here's what I want us to see this is just normal y'all Whenever Jesus, you know, came, 50 years later, John wrote his gospel because there were false teachers who were projecting wrong ideologies. And parents of that day had to do the very same thing that you and I have to do in the day that we're living in. In John's day, there was a Gnostic, a Gnostic his name was Serinthus, and he began to teach things that were in error, but they were widely popular. And what he taught is that Jesus actually was born of Mary and Joseph, and that the Spirit of God came to Jesus when he was baptized, and then it left Jesus before the Passion Week, and that, 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 that Jesus was anointed of God, and, and the God in Jesus was what we saw during those seasons of his life. And then he taught as well that there was a lesser God who created the material world that you and I see. And he said that's why we should abstain from all physical pleasure because it was a lesser God who created the, the, the universe that we see. It wasn't God or Jesus who created the universe. Now this had wide acceptance in the church, so much so that they had to call a council to deal with it. So here's what I want us to do this morning. I want us to look at how our spiritual fathers dealt with error because a lot of us are, are dealing with this in our society that is so post-Christian today. And first, John said in John 1 1 he wrote in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning 
and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. So you notice that John didn't avoid the issue, but he spoke to it with clarity, and he spoke to it with love. The other thing is he rooted it in Scripture. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Because what does Genesis 1-1 say? It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? What does Proverbs 8 say? It says that when God created the heavens and the earth, Jesus was at the side of God. He was a co-creator, and he was laughing with delight at how beautiful God had made everything that God wants you and I to enjoy. So what did John have to do? He had to show people that we're not called to abstain from pleasure. We're actually to enjoy pleasure without worshiping created things above the creator who created things. Can I hear a good amen? You know, Paul had to do the same things. You can see him straightening out the same error in his writings. In Colossians 1, he talks about how Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, both things that are visible and invisible. So again, Paul's making it clear that there's not a lesser God who created the world. It's Jesus and Father God who created everything that we see. Now, why is this important? Because Paul told Timothy, this is how pastors should teach people to live in 1 Timothy 6, 17. He said, command people who are rich in the the present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth. See, whatever we focus on reveals what we believe will bring blessing. Some people are really into the development of their gifts, and they can be blessed a lot because of their development of their gifts, but not at the level that your faith blesses you. Some people are really into education. Education is power. It can help you, and I'm all for education. I'm all for development of your gifts, but I'm going to tell you there are blessings in my life that only came through seeking God that are the most important blessings that I enjoy today in this life. And then you think about what they're going to mean in eternity. Can you say amen? So Paul said, don't let people get arrogant if you're a pastor. But then notice, he said this, but tell them to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. In other words, you notice that Paul said, as Christians, we should be enjoying life because it's our Father who created everything that we see. But he says, tell them not to be arrogant and tell them not to put their hope in wealth. Why? Because it really is true that money talks. A wise man said, when you take your last breath, it's going to say bye-bye to you. Can you say amen? And that's why wise people don't rent her, uh, U-Hauls to put behind their hearse. Because, listen, we can't take it with us. But money is a beautiful tool that people can serve God with. But listen to what Paul said to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 7, he said that as Christians, when we buy something, we should buy it as if it's not ours to keep. I, I always quote this to Tamara when we go to restaurants. I say, man, get anything you want on the menu. Just don't buy it as if it's yours to keep because I'm going to eat some. Can somebody say amen? And then he went on to say, listen, and those who use the things of the world, don't get engrossed in them, for this world is passing away in its present form. So you notice that God says to us, listen, righteousness is what you want. You don't want to get engrossed in creation. You don't want to get lost in things that God made, but you want to live a life where you enjoy it because you recognize every day. I step outside. There's so much that's beyond my control, but thank God I have a God who cares about me so much. He's given me instructions in his word so that I can rely upon him and I can live rewarded as a person. Can you say amen? Here's the second floodgate I want you to think about this morning, and that's the floodgate of maturity. Now, this one's a little more subtle in Malachi's writings, but listen to what he writes. He said, and again, he's quoting God, that if God says, if you'll return to me, I can solve all your problems, then here's your, your natural question to ask God. How are we to return? And God says, well, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? And God says, in tithes and offerings, and you're under a curse, the whole nation of you. 
because you're robbing me. So bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in my house and test me and see if I won't throw open the floodgates of heaven. Now for some of you who are still paying your Christmas bills, I want you to know I'm teaching on testing God, not on tithing today. So you can have a sigh of relief, okay? But, but here's what I want you to notice that you know, we can be uh, righteous without being mature. In other words, we can value God's righteousness and know a lot of things to do, but it doesn't mean we know enough to do in order for God to bless a part of our life. But when we expect God to flood us, not just with righteousness, but with a maturity that will make a part of our life work that isn't working out right now, listen, God's going to flood your life with blessing whenever you mature. And so don't you get discouraged as we start a new year. Some people put their head down and they'll say, well, pastor, you know, it's just a family I was a part of. I'm still paying for my parents' curses. Well, you know what? Ezekiel 18 says, don't you think like that. that, that don't you say that my life's messed up because of what my parents did. Because God says, whoever obeys me is going to be blessed because they obey me. Listen, just because we weren't born in the right family. How many of you know we became part of the royal family whenever we came to Jesus Christ the Savior? Can you say amen? But, but it takes takes righteousness, and then it takes maturity in our heart too. And listen to what God is capable of in every single one of our lives. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, and God's able to make all grace abound towards you so that you always having sufficiency in all things may have an abundance in every good work. Now, why do I have sufficiency? Because Jim is so smart? Absolutely not. My sufficiency is in the fact that God is able to handle what I'm weary and what I'm worried about in this season of my life. And because of who he is, I can now have abundance in my life. Now, when we read the Bible, what we're learning are principles that can turn the things that have gone wrong in our life into wonderful blessing that God can bring. That's why I study my Bible every day, and this year I'll be somewhere between my 45th and my 50th time to read God's Word. When I pray, I'm following the presence of the one who can take me to places of blessing I could never reach if I wasn't honoring his presence in my life. I want to tell you another story. This is about a pastor who's 70 years old to Today. And he talked about how when he was young, he pastored his first church, and it was a small church, and it started to grow. And he sensed that he wasn't supposed to give his whole life to that church, but he was to move on after a few years. So he put out his uh, resume to a number of churches within his arenas of favor, and a number of them came back saying, yeah, we'd like to consider you to be our next pastor. And most of the churches were bigger than the church that he had pastored before, but when he prayed, he sensed God was telling him to take a smaller church than the one that he pastored before. And he thought, now this doesn't make sense to me because God says that his reward for my faithfulness is to give me more, not to give me less. So he asked his wife, when you pray, what are you sensing? Hoping that she could talk him out of going to this small church. And she said, well, honey, God, God, I, you know, I think God's telling us to go to this small church. So then he thought, well, maybe this small church can be good to me and bless me more than I think they can. So he began to retalk the, the salary package that the church was offering him. And what he found out is they were very generous people, but they only had the capacity to do a certain amount. So he said that all he could afford was this rat-infested house in the community where he was going to pastor. So he and his wife moved in. And he started remodeling this rat-infested house. And he said the first month they literally had a rat crawl into bed with them. And I'm telling you, if Tamara had been his wife, she would have said, Jim, you know the place where my parents live, and you can call me when the last rat is gone. Can you say amen? And I would have respected her opinion, but evidently his wife could have been on Survivor or something. I don't know what was going on because she just stayed with him, and he fixed up this house. And he wasn't thinking about this, but he had a skill 
that he wasn't thinking about, but his father, God, was. And over the next several years, not only did that church grow into one of the most influential churches in that state, and they started many churches that blessed people, but he remodeled and sold 11 houses and put all of his kids through school, and God blessed them. How many of you know God knows factors we're not even thinking about? And God knows how to bless our life, right? But we have to recognize and we have to receive from the floodgates of heaven. And the floodgates are God's righteousness. When I do what God knows is right, he rewards my life. Those floodgates are maturity. When through Bible study and prayer, I learn more about the way God would handle things and his specific will for my life, God begins to increase his blessing on my life. And then here's the final thing, and that is, to me, floodgate number three is an understanding of opportunity. You notice God says, I'll do four things in the life of a person who honors me. Number one, I'll throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing you won't have room enough to, to, to store it. So the first thing God does is he blesses me in ways I could never have blessed myself. The second thing he says is, and I'll prevent the pest from devouring what you have. God protects me from what the enemy would have done if I wasn't honoring God. Number three, and this is so important to us in the day we live in, verse 12 says, then all nations are going to call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Can I tell you something I realized one day, because I'm a fix-it guy. Some of you are fix-it guys like I am. And sometimes if I'm not careful, I get more upset about the things I can't fix than I do enjoying the blessings that God's brought into my life. So if you are that kind of person, I am Jim Graff, and I'm going to confess my my sin to you like an alcoholic, okay? You know how you start and say, my name's Jim Graff, and I've been free for so many years if you go to celebrate recovery, right, Tim? Well, I want you to know I am a, uh, what I tell Tamara is I am a uh, recovering choleric. I'm not a recovering alcoholic, but I'm a recovering choleric. And can I tell you what I've learned? I've learned that Jim can't fix things near as good as God can fix things. So I'm going to do my best every day. I'm going to follow God a lot. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rejoice in how good he makes everything in spite of the fact that my world isn't perfect. Can you say amen? And I want to encourage you to do that this year because whenever people can look at your life and they can see She's only walking in that strength because she knows God. What she's going through emotionally, most people would quit. But she knows God, and I can see God's working in her life. Or you know what? Man, I remember when things were going wrong in their life. And now God has made a way, and their life is so much better. And you know what? I know it's because of what God's done in their life. You know what that does? It causes others to want to serve the God that you're serving. And for many of us, we don't know what to do about our kids. Some of us have kids that are just out of control. And can I tell you, this is what you do about your kids. Because when they see the rewards of God's righteousness in your life, it is the greatest calling card that you could possibly have into what can fix the problems of their life. And that's why when my kids were small, I'd say to them often, you know, when they they first started working, I said, listen, don't worry so much about your paycheck in your first job. What you want is you want good mentoring And you want somebody to mature you so that you're ready for the opportunity that God's going to bring into your life. Because there are opportunities all around you, and you don't see them right now. But if you learn the right things to do, and if you mature, you're going to be amazed at the opportunity that God brings into your life. And that's why God said the things that he did in Malachi, and we'll close with it today. God said to them, and and it's a good book to read. Maybe some of you, uh, maybe it'd be a good book to read before you start the new year. I know for me, it's the last book in our daily Bible reading plan. So I just read the book of Malachi yesterday before I preached to you about it today. But listen to the beginning of the book as we close and and think with me a minute. God said in Malachi 1.6, he said, a son honors his father and a slave his master. But if I'm a father... 
where's the honor due me? And if I'm a master, where's the respect that do, that's due me, says the Lord Almighty. So God is saying that you guys are weary in worship and you're upset that things aren't working out. And I'm just going to ask you a question. If I'm a father who knows how to work things out, is the problem really that I'm not blessing you? Or is the problem that you need to learn to honor me better in your heart? And let's face it, guys, we got a big issue in our culture. Have you guys noticed how out of control things are, right? They're out of control everywhere that we look as people. And God has never needed his people to step up more and to say, you know what? We serve a God who said he can remove iniquities in one day. If hearts get right with him, he knows the right things to do to turn everything around quicker than you ever dreamed that things could be turned around. But you and our problems aren't. Number one, our problem is that we are in a post-Christian time when people are fighting God's answers to the agony and the difficulty that's all around us. The other problem is we as parents need delivered a little bit from being approval addicts. And I'm going to tell you, I understand it because, you know, we're busy. And for us, most of us, the husband and the wife are working. And we want our kids to love us. But can I tell you the best way to get your kids to love you? Teach them God's word and how God rewards the righteous. And they'll say, thank you, mom and dad, for living it and showing me the pathway to life. Can you say amen? God says, you want answers to prayer? Let me be your father. Respect me. Don't just talk about me when you come to church, but respect me. And then I love this in closing, Malachi 1, 11, and 12. God makes a promise. He says, my name will be great among the nations. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, God's name is going to be great in your life this year. Would you go ahead and say that to somebody? God's name is going to be great in your life this year. Next week, we're going to start learning how to let God be the headliner of our life for the things that he does. And God says, my name will be great among the nations from where the sun rises to where the sun sets. Now think about this for a minute because Malachi wrote these words in the 400s B.C. And man, there was just a little group of people who knew God in Jerusalem and there were only 120 in the upper room. And Malachi says one day... God's name is going to be great everywhere the sun is rising, everywhere the sun is setting. Is anybody here grateful today we live in that day where God has powerful churches and believers that he's blessing all over the world today, amen? And God says, man, my name's going to be great. But notice who God's name is great for. God says, my name will be great. He said, in every place where incense and pure offerings are brought to me. Incense means praise. Incense means we're counting it joy in spite of the fact that everything isn't working out perfectly in our life. Pure offerings are referring to the way that we give our heart to God. You know, people, the sin nature doesn't change. These people were giving God blind animals and they were giving him blemished animals and God said, no, I don't want that. I want the first of your animals. I want the firstborn. And I want unblemished animals. And you're thinking, well, God, why do you want that? Because, you know what? I kind of like eating the first animal. <laughs> and I kind of like, you know, the, the unblemished animal. I like having those too. And can I just be real? I, I want to tell you something really deep this morning, okay? I was a person before I was a pastor. That's deep, right? And when I was a kid, I wasn't raised in a Bible preaching church. As a matter of fact, I was raised in a home where my mom gave me two things. And they were in my room every day of my life. Number one, I had holy water because she knew her son needed holy water in his room. The second thing I had was I had offering envelopes because my mom knew that she wanted her little boy to be a part of a community who knew there was a God. And I became involved in Bible study in a church like this because I recognized I needed a whole lot more of God than what I had when I was 17 years old. And when that happens to you in life, you come to this point where your heart's tested. And that's what Malachi's talking about, your heart's tested. And you say, okay, God, 
you're asking me to give you the first day of my week and the first part of my day, and you're asking me to give you money. And if I'm just real, God, I can think of some things that would really make me happy with this money that I'm giving you. Am I speaking in the right church this morning? Right? I could think of some things that would really make me happy. And God's over here saying, I know. But what you don't know is maybe you haven't noticed that the sun is 27 million degrees at its core. And if I had put it any closer to you, you would fry. And if I put it any further away from you, you would freeze. And I know more about your life than you do. And I promise I'll make you happy, but I'll stop sin's curse, and I'll bring you blessings you could never find without me. And trust me, in eternity, you'll be so glad that you served me. Come on, am I in a house filled with people who want to experience that from God? Let's give him a good hand clap this morning. Can we give him a good hand clap of praise, filled with faith as we start our year? And here's what I want to do in closing that I want us to say this together. I want you to say, my struggle is turning into blessing through God's supply. Let's say it again. My struggle is turning into blessing through God's supply. We're going to learn to step into the more that God has in store for us in, in 2023. But I want to encourage you to do this. I put them on your outline. I know I kept you a little longer this morning, so you can look at them on your own. But two places where God said he was going to open the windows of heaven. One was with Noah. And how many of you believe there's enough rain that came? So God has enough for you if you value his floodgates. The second place, I love this story, Elisha was, he had a word for people who were in famine. And he said, tomorrow at this time, he said, basically, wheat and barley are going to be really, really low. So it'd be like if I said to you, hey, guys, inflation's over. And when you go to H-E-B, Walmart, Audis, wherever you go, you're not going to buy a gallon of milk and think that you just bought a cow. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. He, he, said, he said, God's going to do something about this. And the Bible says that the king's officer was, the, the king was leaning on his officer's arm. And the officer said, if God opened the windows of heaven, could such a thing happen? In other words, if God flooded this situation, could such a thing happen? That's what God wants you to allow him to do in your heart this year. How many of y'all don't want a trickle of God? You want a flood of God that changes everything this year. Amen? Okay, well, let's all bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. And before we go, I know there are lots of people here today. And some of you would say to me, you know what, Jim? I know in my heart that I'm not being loved by God the way that I really want to be loved by God. And some are probably saying, I know I'm not being led by God the way that I really need to be led by God. The good news is Paul made a promise. He said in Romans 10 that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Think of that promise. Everyone with regrets, everyone who could feel condemned today, everyone who could be confused, I promise you, if you'll call on the name of the Lord, he's going to bring salvation into your life. That's what God wants for all of us. He wants us to turn from sin, turn from things that, have, that are occupying our hearts, and he wants us to turn to him so that he can bring salvation into our life. And if you're here today and you say, Jim, I know that's what my heart needs, we want to pray for you. So I'm going to count to three. And on three, I want you to lift your hands in the air as a sign that you're ready to call on the name of the Lord today. Are you ready? One, two. If you're ready for a season of God's goodness, three. Shoot your hand up. Awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? Just wave it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, ushers. Awesome, awesome. Anybody else? We only wait because you're important. God's ready for a new season. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, let's all look up. Let's put our hand in our heart.
And let's pray with those who lifted their hand. Let's say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for coming to earth so we'd know how real God's love is and how incredible his ability to bless life truly is. Today, Lord, I say no to sin and I say yes to you. Thank you, Lord, for this incredible gift of salvation. I look forward, Lord, to the abundant life that you can give, and Lord, to eternal life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Well, hey, can we give a hand clap to those who prayed? And if you pray very quickly, I just want to tell you the reason we clap is because the Bible says that there's great joy in heaven over the decision that you made. We also clap because we know God has a great future in store for you. Uh, you know, God's been so good to me, and it gives me so much joy to watch him be good to other people. We also know that the church is, is called to support people, to help people learn to walk with God so he can reward their life. So we've prepared two things to help you get off to a great start today. Number one is this salvation card. It's in the seat back in front of you. And uh, you can let us know if you're starting a relationship with God, if you're returning to God today. You can register to be baptized like those precious people did uh, earlier. And you can also uh, let us know if you know that God's calling you to be a member of Faith Family Church. Then in a minute, Tamara's going to come and she's going to lead us in giving our tithes and legacy offerings while people are writing out checks or preparing their envelopes, of course, some give through phone. But if you'll fill out this card and then put it in the giving box on the way out, you'll notice there are some white packets. And in those packets are a gift to you. It's called 30 Days to a New Beginning. And man, we look forward to what God's going to do in, in the days ahead in your life. Amen. Can we give them another good hand clap, church family? Man, well, what a great word to start the year out. How many of you are glad you came to church today? Wasn't that so good? And I don't need to encourage you much about giving today after that message, but I do want to remind you that our prayer guides and our uh, fasting and pr prayer and fasting guides and our Bible reading guides are in the lobby. So you can pick one up uh, today on your way out if you'd like to do that. One lady, I read her post uh, that goes to our, our church. She said uh, she, for the first time she read through her Bible for the very first time this year. And she's, she's, not a teenager, <laughs> she's older, but she said it was awesome. So how many of you are going to shoot for that this year? Amen. God's going to do good things. You know, I appreciate so much, and I know you do, the way that our staff, our volunteers, all of our leaders service the way they do, you know, week in and week out. Some, uh, somebody thought that uh, everybody that worked around here was paid, but how many of you know that's not true? That's impossible. People are, who have willing and generous hearts are the ones who work and who serve us, who pray for us, who love us, and uh, who disciple. So would you give yourself a good hand? Thank you for all that you do. Amen. I want to I wanna also remind you that prayer journals will be available next week in our bookstore uh, for a, just a, a small fee. So let's read the scripture together. Can we do that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. you got to go fast. <laughs> and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth. When we give to God, we're making a declaration that we trust in him. And how many of you believe this year that we're going to practice our faith well and we're going to see the floodgates of heaven open over us? Amen. In 2023. So let's prepare to give before we go today. Well, whether you're giving with the envelope uh, in the seat back in front of you or your phone, let's hold that up and bless it together. 
Father, we love you, and God, we thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, to give to your work. Lord, thank you that we get to be a part of what you're doing, Lord, and that when we give, you're making a difference, Lord, in our lives, in our homes, in our community, and Father, even all the way around the world. So God, we just give uh, with cheerful hearts, thankful to be a part of your work. I pray that our tithes and offerings go a long way for your work this morning, and I pray a blessing over the giver as we give cheerfully to start our year today. We love you in Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen. Well, man, how, how good was it to spend your New Year's Day in church, right? What a good way to kick off 2023. Man, so glad to be with you this morning. So glad you came. I want to remind you of a couple things before we go. Number one, we'll have our prayer team up front. So if you came wanting personal prayer today, they'll be up here. Just make your way down to the front, and they would love to pray with you. Uh, the second thing real quick is this. How many of you guys have been to one of our encounter nights on Wednesday nights? Yeah, it's a night of prayer, a night of uh, praise, a night of prophecy, and we're going to be having that going on this coming Wednesday night at 7 p.m. It's always a good time. We get to worship God together. We get to pray. You know, there's power in prayer, and then uh, every time we've gotten together, God's done something special. I've um, had words and different, different awesome things just to let him, him move, and so we're going to have a great time on Wednesday night if you want to come out for that, all right? Well, before we go, can I pray a prayer of blessing over you? Let's pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Have a great day, guys. Happy New Year. You're just Church family, thanks so much for joining us for the very first service of 2023. We hope that this service blessed you. We love being together with you on Sunday mornings. And we know a lot of you are traveling this morning on your way back home, so we pray that you make it safely. We wanted to say, if you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time today, when Pastor Jim was giving that altar call, we're excited for you. And as a church, we want to be a family to you. We want to walk beside you. And so if you'd let us know that you made that decision, you can do that by going to our website, myFS com slash new life. One of our team members, they'll get your information. They'll get in contact with you and they'll help answer any questions that you have regarding this new journey. Also, you can leave a comment right now in the stream and our online host, our moderators are there. They're ready to pray with you and answer any questions. There's also a devotional that we would love to get in your hands. And if you're here in Victoria, you can stop by any day this week at our church office and we would get you a copy of that devotional. But anyways, church family, again, we're glad that you joined us. We're believing that 2023 is going to be our best year yet and we can't wait to see you back here on Wednesday night for our encounter night. We love y'all and we pray you have a great week.